The state level elections will be today, it's going on today, and Nigerians will be selecting who their leaders will be at state level, who the governors will be, and who the members of the houses of assembly would be. Honestly, I think this is the more important level of the election and leadership selection than even the presidential level, because at the level of impact on the people, this is the level where a lot of the impact would happen. The roads in your neighborhood, the roads around your village, your community, everything, these are the people that will determine whether it is done or not. The street lights in your place, where there is no street light, there will be tendency for criminals to be hiding around and you will be scared of going out at night. This is where it will be determined. The primary schools, the secondary schools, this is these are the people that will determine how they are funded, how they are designed, and what the curriculum will be and everything. So I really think this is the election that is way more impactful than even the Tunubu and Buhari elections that we have all been more hyped about. So today, as we select the leaders for these levels of governance, I want to highlight the three elections that I think are the hottest. They are the most, I find the most interesting across the country for today. The third, uh, the third one I would say that I find interesting is the River State election. PDP's candidate, which is like weakest candidate, is the Simini Alayi Fibura uh, guy. He might not be so well known, but Iwike has shown that he is the master of politics in River State. And that Wike has delivered for APC in the presidential election. So there's a good chance that it's payback time for APC to support him in this one because definitely Wike did a lot to um, deliver his state for the APC. So there's that atmosphere that could P uh, PDP or could Wike specifically uh, could have struck that uh, partnership to have him deliver the presidential election, which he did, and uh, APC let him have his way, essentially. It's not like APC has a choice, so, because on the other side, we have the Tony Cole, which is the APC guy that is supposed to come against the vast infrastructure, the vast network of Tino, uh, Wiki's um, candidates. But APC is so fractured, you have, we don't know where, Amechi stands as we speak. Magnus Abe is in uh, is in SDP, so we really cannot tell what APC the strength of APC. So Tony Cole is a good guy. He's an architect. He looks like a competent guy, but politically we don't see much because the master of River State politics is on top of his game as we speak. So if I'm to project, I would say PDP Wike will likely have his way. You have other parties like the LP and uh, SDP and the rest of them are called party, but in all honesty, they've not been able to move, create as the mobilization and the atmosphere that we think would put them in a good state to contest for this election. The second interesting state is Kaduna State. Kaduna State is the home of Erufai. Erufai has this air of um, authority. He has been a vocal person from Kaduna State. He has performed and everything. So he looks like the godfather of Kaduna State politics, but that whole um, atmosphere and aura was demystified in the last election that he was supposed to do, delivered for Tinobu. He could not deliver that. That was a shocker for a lot of people, but people that know what happened in the background knew that Atiku really mobilized the funds and the whatever you need to really Pull the rug underneath um, Erufai was done by Atiku. So now that atmosphere of invincibility of Erufai has sincerely been shattered. So this time it's going to be a lot harder. His candidate in the APC is Ubasani. Ubasani looks competent, looks good, and everything. But the gambit that um, Erufai used by having a Muslim. Muslim ticket, essentially him and having the lady from Southern Kaduna, the uh, Hadiza, as his candidate, worked for him because he had the energy. He was on the ballot, but now he's not on the ballot. He needs Ubasani to deliver it. On the other hand, you have Isa Ashiru of um, PDP with a Christian ticket. So this ticket is more balanced, and there's a good chance that people would will uh, the Southern Kaduna, the non-Muslims, and even Muslims that believe this ticket should be balanced would be uh, could be voting for the PDP ticket. However, the weakness of the PDP ticket is also that they have the LP ticket also, although has a Christian, a Christian governorship candidate and a Muslim vice 
governorship candidate. So this is also a relatively strong ticket for the Southern Kaduna people and even the non-Muslim that are religiously motivated. So with this mapping, where you have the LP and the PDP having a balanced ticket and you have the APC and the government, the incumbency power, having a Muslim-Muslim ticket, I see a very interesting and tightly contested election. However, with the shock that uh, Erufa has had two weeks ago and having like, you know, three weeks ago, having a whole of three weeks to re-strategize and everything, I see a situation where I project a situation where APC still carries the day, but with a very narrow margin. Finally, the biggest drama center of this election, which is the Lagos State um, governorship election, where we had the shocker from Labour Party. You know, Labour Party and the whole, and uh, Lagos State being the epicenter of the whole obedience uh, movement revolution, essentially. But now the problem is the Messiah or Bipita Obi is not on the ticket. He's not on the ticket. Will the energy, will they be able to mobilize all the churches and all the various organs of the society, the identity politics and everything that uh, the party was able to mobilize, the Igbo constituency and everything? Will it be as charged as it was during the presidential election now that Peter Obi is not on the ballot? And secondly, the fact that um, uh, Sanwolu and Tinubu have seen what happened then. They are a lot more, um, they are not as confident. So now they are going a lot out of their way to ensure that this, uh, the disappointment of the presidential election does not repeat itself. So you have Sanwolu all over the place. I mean, there are even jokes all over the internet of you, if you want Sanwolu to attend your birthday party, just tell him that if you don't come, if you don't come, just play the LP. Uh, and Tawolu appeared there just to ensure that he gets his vote from that party, from whatever birthday party you have. The LP party has shown during the presidential election that they can match the PDP and the APC in mobilization for mobilization, rigging for rigging, sorry, of defeat. Electronic hacking for electronic hacking and everything. So really, Labour Party ideally would not be taken for granted going forward. But really, after all said and done, with the way things are going, with the number of negative publicity that the governorship candidate of the Labour Party, Badebo, uh, has been having, and then even for me, even worse off is some of the images that came out of the vice governorship, the deputy governorship candidate, the lady there smoking, you know, almost like uh, a chimney, essentially, with smoke coming out of her mouth, her nose and everything. It's not the best of image to have for somebody that will be coming out for the vice governorship, deputy governorship uh, position. So it looks to me like while um, the momentum LP might have had that wave, I will see that with the energy that APC is putting into it by the end of this election, I will still want to project that APC, Jide Sonwolu will still win this election by a wide margin because they are a lot more serious and LP might not necessarily be able to mobilize as much people when they had as they did when they had Peter Obi on a ticket for it. So that's those are my projections for the top most interesting those three states that I'm looking forward to to seeing how it plays out. I'll see you in the next one.